Dan expectant faces tonight to be in the presence of God. Amen. And so this is our time of corporate prayer where we come in and we pray together. We present to the Lord um, the just the petitions of the church. Um, and even tonight, if you have a personal prayer petition, I want you to find a piece of paper and I want you to write it down and I want you to give it to me while we begin our time of prayer. You don't have to put your name on it if you don't want to. Um, but just go ahead and do that now as we take a few minutes to get ready. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 We honor you tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness. And just let me know if we are able to go live. At what point we are live? Okay, we're already live. Oh, hello, online family. All right, thank you, Jesus. We praise God for this amazing video team of people. Thank you, Lord. Let me go ahead and jump in there really quickly and see who is joining us tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see it. Let me turn this down. Thank you, Lord. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I see Miss Leslie. I see Miss Devin, Miss LJ. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Make sure that you share the link with someone and let us know. Glory to God. Who is joining us tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have a prayer request that you want to send us, go ahead and go um, to your email and send us an email to info at Maranatha Life Church. Info at Maranatha Life Church, and we'll be praying for you um, tonight. I will be praying for you privately. Um, whatever it is that you feel like is on your heart. And I really want you to be encouraged in the place of prayer. I want you to be encouraged in the place of prayer. And so Philippians chapter 4, write this down. We have to start kind of putting these things in our heart and hiding these things in our heart. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, it says, be anxious for nothing. Okay? How many of us deal with sometimes dealing with anxiety? Okay? The Bible tells us, be anxious for nothing. He's saying, don't let anything bring you out of the place of peace. Don't let anything bring you into out of faith and into anxiety. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in every situation, in every moment, every day, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so we're here and we're making our requests known to God, okay? We have requests for the church. We have requests for people. You're writing down a request tonight that you wanna share so that we can bring it before God. But I pray that even as you write out that request that you are allowing every bit of anxiety to drain off of you as the ink hits the paper. Let that anxiety just roll off of you and say, I'm going to believe God concerning this thing. I'm going to, and this is the thing many times, thank you so much, Miss Lisa. I see her grabbing some paper. Um, many times we'll say, well, I've, I've been believing God for this, but I have not seen a change yet. Hold on. Keep believing. Keep taking steps of faith as you're doing. Keep asking. Keep showing up. Keep knocking on doors because doors are going to open. The doors that God wants to be open are going to be open. I'm just consistently receiving testimonies. So don't throw in the towel until you have a testimony. Somebody say, I will have a testimony. I will testify in the name of Jesus. And so I'm not going to walk through life and not have testimonies. I will have testimonies. And some tests, I feel the Holy Spirit. Some testimonies may take a little longer than others, but you will testify. You will testify. Come on, declare that with me. I will testify. There's a psalm that says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
So that means you don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience the goodness of the Lord. We're going to experience the goodness of the Lord here while we are on this earth. Amen. And so the Bible in Philippians, it tells us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So we give him our prayer, we give him our supplication, but we, we mix that with thanks. Father God, I need you to show up in this area of my life. I'm praying that your will be done, but God, I thank you because you're working. I thank you that even if I don't see it, God, you are moving, that your hand is moving, God, even though I, I don't have a testimony yet, but God, I thank you that I will testify. I will declare the goodness of the Lord. And so you mix your prayer with thanks, okay? Why are we saying thank you? Because we believe that God is in control, okay? It is our custom that if somebody gives us something, we say thank you after they give it to us. But in the kingdom, sometimes things are opposite in the spiritual than what they are in the natural. In the kingdom, we say thank you before we receive it because we be it's called faith. We believe that it's coming. Amen? So it says, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. And verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, will guard will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Why does your heart and your mind need a guard? Can anybody tell me? <laughs> you can easily, exactly. You can easily, so to guard something means that it's possible that there can be an attack. So the peace of God is a guard. It's almost like the goalie in, in soccer, okay? The peace of God is the goalie that is not going to allow anything that the enemy tries to shoot at you to make it in. So he's going to try. He's playing his game. He's kicking that ball. He's throwing discouragement. He's throwing bad news. He's throwing all. He is, he is shooting his shot, as they say. But when we come to the Lord and we bring our petition to the Lord, we're supposed to come with thanksgiving, getting rid of anxiety, getting rid of worry, okay? And what? We pray until there's a peace. And once you get that peace, keep it. You hear me? What did I just say? Once you get your peace, keep it, okay? Because once, that, once you receive the peace, he's going to try to what? He's going to try to take your peace. He's going to try to show you another thing that goes against what you're praying. He's going to try to show you another natural thing to make you believe that God is not moving. You're praying and you're believing. You're thanking God for your healing. And suddenly you have a pain that you didn't have yesterday. To get you to what? Backtrack. Okay? So we have to understand the schemes of the enemy. And we have to know how to bring our petition and our request toward the Lord. And we have to do it with thanksgiving, and we have to do it consistently. Somebody say consistently. Consistency is 99% of this game. Okay? Consistency is 99% of that game. So when we come, how many of you how many of you don't feel like being here right now? Yeah, I mean, maybe you had a hard day. Maybe it was a long day. Maybe you understand what I'm saying? Right? Maybe the drive was long. Maybe traffic was horrendous. And what should have taken 30 minutes was 50 minutes. And you haven't eaten. And you're tired. But there's something within you that is saying, I am going to be consistent. I am going to show up. I'm going to believe God. If I pastored by what I feel, you would never see your pastor. <laughs> you wouldn't see me. Okay? I may come in and I'm dragging myself. But by the time I leave, I'm just like, God is doing something. God is moving. God is on the move because your spirit, okay? You have a spirit, you have a soul, your emotions, and you have your body. Your body is connected to your five senses, what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you sense. Usually what you sense with your senses is opposite to what God is saying, okay? And so we have to learn how to pump up this spirit. And that's why we come and we pray. We come and we pray corporately because that is something that God asks us to do in his word. 
but we also have to get in the habit and in the discipline of praying what? Privately, having our own private conversation with God daily. Now, Papa, who is our spiritual um, covering, our overseer, our apostle, he has this book, many of you know the book, the book of prayer, and I love this book. There is a chapter where literally it just has all of these scriptures. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just read through some of them. And it is repetitious, but it is the word of God, okay? We don't have to invent anything new. The word is the word, and the word has power. The word is authority. And so sometimes you may say, what gives me the right to ask? What gives me the authority to ask? The fact that you're a child of God gives you the right to ask. It gives you the right to come before the Lord and make your petition known to the Lord, okay? And so when you look at Matthew 6, it says, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So you go into your secret place, you don't feel anything, but you still pray. It's verse six, so Matthew six, verse six. You go into your secret place and you pray and you don't feel anything, but then when the testimony comes through, that's the reward. Okay, so you pray in secret, God rewards you in public. You seek God in secret, God promotes you in public. You seek God in secret, God elevates you in public. Suddenly opportunities are coming to you. Suddenly doors are opening. Suddenly you have favor in an area that you never had favor. Suddenly money is coming to you that was not coming before. Things are changing, things are shifting. All of those things are God's reward because he makes a promise. He said, if you seek me privately, I will reward you openly, okay? And he says, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen, heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. So in that time, it was the habit of when you went into prayer, it's like when people chant and they say the same thing over and over and over again. And it's like a broken record and they just chant and it's spoken over and over and over and over again. He's saying, that's not it. Come and have a conversation with me. Come and get in my presence. Come and talk to me. Come and declare my word. And it's not that we're just declaring the word of the Lord to God, but when we get in the presence of God and we begin to declare the word of God, it is serving notice to every demon. It is serving notice to every Everything in your atmosphere and everything in your life that is out of line, everything that is in your life that, has, that does not have permission to be there, it literally, the word of God has the power to shift and to move those things and cause those things to line up with God, which is powerful, okay? So we don't just go into the place of prayer just to repeat a phrase, hoping that God will hear us. We go into the place of prayer with the word of God. We go into the place of prayer with faith. Is the heater on? Because it's hot. Okay. We may need a little bit of a gust of air if possible because it is warm. Okay? So he's saying don't be like the heathen and use vain repetitions because they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. So God is saying, I already know what you need. Okay? But it is your mouth that gives my words license and power to move on the earth, okay? So I always go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the water. But then the Bible says, and God, what? Said, did God know that light was needed? He already knew that there was a need for light. But the power is not in knowing what is needed. The power is in declaring, according to the word of God, what is needed, okay? So God already knows what you need, but when you declare it, when you pray it, when you decree it, okay? Prayer, decree, declaration, it's all in the same family, okay? I can pray and I can talk to God, but then I speak to my circumstances. I speak to my situation. So I come and I say, Father, 
I just thank you so much because your word says that by your stripes I am healed and I am declaring that my body is healed in the name of Jesus. I receive healing power in my body. So I decree, what is a decree? A decree is an official announcement, okay? It's like when you are a king, the king could have conversations with people, but at the point that he is done brainstorming and he has made a decision, now comes the decree. This is the decree of the king. In the land, there will not be X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever the case may be. So we have our prayer time, and when our faith is built up and we have that faith to believe, then we come and we decree. So I've prayed, I've asked the Lord to heal my body. I'm not being anxious. I begin to thank God, and I decree. So when I decree, I speak to my body. Body, you're going to line up with the word of God. Body, in the name of Jesus, you will walk in the healing of God. Joints, I command you to be made whole in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm going to get on this bike and I'm going to ride bike for 15 minutes and my knees are not going to ache in the name of Jesus. I command and I decree and I declare that my age will not be my cage, but I will continue. I will continue to flourish. I will continue to be in good health. That is the decree. I can come and pray about a financial situation. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I'm praying, Father, you said that you would prosper me. You said that you would bless the work of my hands. And so I decree in the name of Jesus and I speak to my bank accounts and I command you to, to be filled in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that opportunity is coming to me. I decree in the name of Jesus that money comes to me from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I decree. So I pray and I make my request known unto God and God comes in agreement with my prayer and then I decree and I speak to it because if you don't believe, you can't decree. Okay? There's a difference between saying something like a parrot so when we get in the word and we get in that place of prayer with God, faith is supposed to come alive. If you don't have faith for that thing, keep seeking the word of God concerning that faith. So that concerning that thing, so that faith can come alive in you. And then there comes a moment where you just know that you know that you know that you know, I ain't never going to be broke no more. When you know I am, I am not going to die of this sickness. I am going to be healed in the name of Jesus. I am already healed in the name of Jesus. And then now you begin to decree from a place of what? Authority. Authority. We have to stand in positions of authority. Why does the enemy tempt you with sin? Because he wants to rob you of your authority. So when you're in sin, you feel guilty, you can't pray, you don't want to go before God, and then now you're separated from God, and because you're separated from God, you have no faith because your heart is condemning you. Now you can't pray, you can't decree, now you're anxious. All of these things affect each other, okay? So all of the pieces, we want all of the pieces to be together. Matthew 7, verse uh, 7 to 11 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Does it say maybe? Does it say might? It might be open, it might, it might be answered, it might, no. If you seek, when your heart is lined up with God, if you seek God, you're gonna find him. If you knock on the door looking for God, it's gonna be open. So this is, this is about relationship. So if you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, it's going to be open. And then he's comparing himself to man. So what man is there among you who if the son asks for bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish will give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him so if your child says mom i'm hungry you do not give them a rock here munch on this okay unless you have some type of mental disability or a a, 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 a mental sickness that just doesn't even make sense if your child is hungry you want some toast you want some rice you want some age what do you want Okay, let's, you know, you give them food because they are making a request. And God is saying, if you, in comparison to me, you're evil in comparison to my goodness. 
if you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more the perfect father that I am, I will give you good things. I will give you the Holy Spirit. I will answer your prayer. I am here to teach you how to pray so that you can pray according to my will. So I go through these reminders because I don't want you to be discouraged in your life of prayer. Sometimes you're gonna immediately see a change. Sometimes you're gonna have to wait for the change. Sometimes the testimony is immediate. Sometimes it takes a longer time, but it doesn't matter. You have to know that you know that God is a good God. God loves me and God is taking care of me. God is providing for me. I am not gonna get distracted. I'm not gonna get discouraged. I'm, I'm no plan B, no plan C, no plan D. It's plan A. What is plan A? God, what do you want? God, what do you have? And you continue to seek. You continue to knock. God knows when you need a testimony. God knows when you need a breakthrough. God knows when, he, uh, knows when you need to see a little miracle, right, Kevin, that's going to encourage you to keep You may be going through the hardest season of your life, and suddenly something will come out of the blue. And you say, oh, my gosh, Pastor Joanne, I got a testimony for you. Because God knew you needed that to be able to be encouraged. As the saints used to say, I'm encouraged to see what the end is going to be. Because somewhere on the journey, God in his love and his grace and in his mercy showed up in your situation so that you can be strengthened to keep pressing. I'm here to let you know that there's greater for you. I'm here to let you know that there are testimonies for you. I'm here to let you know that God hears your prayer. It's not just bouncing off the ceilings. It's not just, okay, we come on Wednesdays or we get online on Wednesdays. Uh, just because Pastor Joanne says we have to come. No, it's his word says my house shall be a house of prayer. His word tells us that there is power in prayer. And when we are in corporate prayer, it is even more powerful. And God is able to move. Okay. God is able to move. Romans 8.32. It says, I love this scripture. It says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Okay? So I just need you to imagine this. When Jesus stands before you as his father, as your father, and he says, this is Jesus. He is my son. I allowed him to go to the cross and die for you. But with him, Jesus, I'm giving you healing. With Jesus, I'm giving you prosperity. With Jesus, I'm giving you my peace. With Jesus, I'm giving you my joy. I'm giving you purpose. I am giving you everything that you need. So understand that when he gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. So there is nothing that God has for you that he will withhold from you if it is his will. Okay? So that means that we should operate in hope. Somebody say hope. Okay? 1 Corinthians 2.9. It says, but as it is written, scriptures that we all know, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. What does that mean? That means that as you love God, as you engage in prayer, there are things that God is going to surprise you with that you have not thought about, that you have not imagined, that you did not even think were possible, God is going to show up and say, because I love you, this is what I have for you. Okay? So I want you to come in here with hope. I want you to come in here with understanding. Now, how many of you have your petitions written out already? I gave people an opportunity. So just come and give them to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you that are online, you can go ahead. Hi, love. Thank you. You can get go ahead and send those by email. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that we're able to pray, Father God, with freedom. I thank you that we are able to pray with confidence, Lord God. 
I thank you, Father God, that we're able to come before your presence, Father God, with thanksgiving. I thank you, Father God, that we're able to come, Father God, together, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that there is nothing that you would withhold from us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we are your children. We are your children, Father God, and so I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And, and first and foremost, Father God, before we ask for anything, God, we just begin to give you worship and begin to give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would just begin to just, just give him praise, just begin to give him, just begin to acknowledge him for who he is. Father, you are amazing. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are, you're the love of our lives. Oh God, you are our everything, how we need you how we desire your presence. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that you give us the opportunity, Father God, to come before your presence with thanksgiving, Father God. We acknowledge you, Father God. There is none like you, and we just worship you. We worship you. We praise you, and we honor you. We love you, oh God. Hallelujah. There is no one like you, Father God, and we just adore you in this moment. We come together with the angels and we just say, you are holy. You are holy. You are holy. We, we join with the angels and we declare that you are perfect. You are righteous. You are majestic. You are everything, Father. We ask God that you would give us, Father God, Father God, a, a revelation of who you are, God. I know that there's no way for us to understand everything of who you are, but we pray, God, that you would give us a revelation to be able to, in the place that we are, understand who you are to the capacity that we are able to understand, Father God. Help us to understand that you do not change. Help us to understand that you are faithful. Help us to understand that you will never fail us. Help us to understand that you are always present, that you are a very present help in the time of need. Help us to understand, Father God, that you do not go back on your word. Father God, we have all experienced people, Father God, that have gone back on their word. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that there would be an assurance, Father. Let there be an assurance cemented in our hearts tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an assurance in our heart, oh God, that lets us know, Father God, that you are not like man and you do not go back on your word. You do not go back on your word, Father God. So if you declare that we are blessed, we are blessed. If you declare that we are healed, we are healed. If you declare that we are prosperous, we are prosperous. If you declare that we are walking in a greater purpose than what we could imagine, Father God, we come in agreement, Father God, in what you have spoken and what you have said. And so we thank you right now for your goodness. We thank you, God. Help us to see you for who you are. Now begin to declare over your eyes that every spirit of blindness is removed from your eyes. Come on, I want you to declare that over yourself, even those that are watching online. I want you to declare that over yourself. Every spirit, every spirit of blindness, every spirit that does not allow you to see God for who he is. We're no longer going to see God through our brokenness. Hallelujah. We're not going to see God through our brokenness in the name of Jesus. We're not going to see God through doubt. We're not going to see God through the lens of our negative experiences in the name of Jesus. But I declare that there is an accuracy coming to the way that we see God in the name of Jesus. There's an accuracy coming to the way that we see God. And so, Father, we just say, open the eyes of our spirit. Open the eyes of our spirit. Open the eyes of our spirit to see you. Open the eyes of our spirit to know you, O God. Open the eyes of our spirit. Open the eyes of our spirit. Open the eyes of our heart. Open the eyes of our spirit, God. Allow us to see you for who you are, O God. Allow us to see you for who you are, Father God. I thank you, God, that we will not be tricked by the enemy. I thank you that we will not be blinded by the enemy. I thank you that we will not be discouraged by what we see, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We have 2020 in the spirit. Come on, somebody declare that, that you have 2020 in the spirit. You have 2020 in the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, that there be a precision, that there be, let there be a precision in what we see, oh God. Let there be a precision in what we receive. Let there be a precision in what we are able, Father God, to understand that you are doing in the spirit. And I thank you, God, for the things that we don't understand. I thank you that we have faith. I thank you that we have faith. And I thank you that we have the word of the Lord. I thank you, Father God. And so we bless you right now and we worship you right now. I wanna challenge you to just take another 30 seconds and just release worship, release words of worship to him, release words of affirmation, of gratitude, of thanksgiving, hallelujah. 
How we love you, O oh God. How we love you. How we love you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Rabba sekandara. Rekedebe shonda. Rokororobo setedebe saka. Indororobo senda. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Now we just ask God that you begin to, Father God, pour out your spirit upon us. Father, we want your spirit. Father God, as a church, Father God, as a family, as believers, Father God, we want more of your spirit. Oh, we want more of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. More of your spirit, more of your nature, more of your character, more of you, Father God. We desire more. We desire more. We desire more, God. We don't want to be settled, Father God, in our ways, oh God. And so pour out your spirit upon us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that every time we come into the place of prayer, God, that there would be a fresh outpouring, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, that our life with you would never become stale. I come against that stale, that stale spirit. I come against that habit, just the habit of just doing something that is lifeless. I declare in the name of Jesus that we will not be stale, that we will not be lifeless in the mighty name of Jesus. But we declare, God, that there is a freshness. There is a freshness in the place of prayer. There is a freshness, Father God. God, that there would be, Father God, a, a, an excitement and a joy, Father God, when we come into to your presence, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that we learn how to, Father God, lock out the world, Father God, and unlock the things of the Spirit. Father God, I thank you, God, that we learn how to close the door to the natural things and open the door to the things of the Spirit, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that the, that the realm of the Spirit would become like our natural habitat, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that as we function in this earthly realm, Father God, that we would not feel comfortable and that we would not feel at home. Father God, that we would know and that we would understand, Father God, that this world is opposite to your kingdom. But Father God, that the realm of the spirit, that the realm of your glory, that the place of being in your presence and being with you, Father God, that that would be our natural place of existence, that that would be our natural habitat. God, that that would be the place that we feel, Father God, most alive, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, see right there, there's the declaration. I decree and I declare declare in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that we, Father God, would become, Father God, so, Father God, at peace in your presence. Father God, that we would constantly seek to be in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we declare that we are conscious of the fact that this is not our final home, that we're just passing through. Somebody declare that I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through this earth. And so the money I make, it doesn't even matter because I'm just passing through. I'm making it for kingdom purposes. Hallelujah. And so the house that I live in, it doesn't even matter because it's just about the kingdom. So God, what do you need from me? What do you, what do you need? How can I, how can I, how can this house, Father God, be a blessing, Father God, to your kingdom? How can my money, Father God, be a blessing to your kingdom, Father God, that we would be aware of the fact that we are strangers in this land. And that this is not our final home, Father God. And so that this would cause us, Father God, to constantly come into the place of prayer and the place of worship and the place of seeking God. Teach us, Father God, how to be, Father God, in the world, but not of it. In the name of Jesus. That even while we're doing spreadsheets at work, Father God, that our spirit would be singing a song of worship to the Lord. That we could be in a board meeting handling business, Father God, but our spirit is saying, I glorify you, I magnify you. Father God, I love you, I worship you, I adore you. I just want to be where you are. Father God, that we would know how to do what we have to do on the earth, but our spirit remains connected to heaven at all times, Father God, that we would be conscious that we would be conscious, 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for that outpouring of the Spirit. We thank you for that outpouring of the Spirit. We thank you for that outpouring of the Spirit. Come on, just open your mouth and help me pray. Help me pray. Help me pray. Help me pray and stay in that place of petition, desiring more of His Spirit, desiring more of His presence. Reboko sanda rabakenda. Father God, 
We adore you. We need you. We desire you. We love you. We thank you, God, that as you pour yourself into us, we are being transformed. God, I thank you that we are not who we used to be, God. But as you pour yourself into us, God, we are being transformed. Come on, begin to declare transformation over yourself. I declare that I am being transformed. I declare that I am being transformed. I declare that I am being changed by the Spirit of God. I will not be the same. I will not be the same. I will no longer be stuck in the things of yesterday. I will not be stuck in fear. I will not be stuck in doubt. I will not be stuck in, in sin. I will not be stuck in, 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 in perversion. I will not be stuck in addictions. I will not be stuck, but I am being transformed. I'm being changed and I'm being transformed. And so God, we thank you for the transformation. We thank you for the transformation. And we declare, Father God, that even though the transformation may be moving and happening slowly, but God, I thank you that it's showing up. I thank you that it's happening. I thank you that it's happening. I thank you that it's happening. Hallelujah. Don't you let anybody tell you who you used to be. Don't you let anybody prophesy to you negatively to tell you who you used to be. Continue to press on to who God says that you are right now. Continue to declare who God says you are right now. If you struggle with inconsistency, declare, I am transformed. I am consistent in the name of Jesus. If you struggle with fear, begin to say, I bind that spirit of fear, but I am fearless in the name of Jesus. I am being transformed. I am being transformed. I am being changed into his image. God, that is so exciting. We are being transformed into the image of his beloved son. And so God, I thank you that every moment of every day, we are becoming more like Christ. I thank you that every moment of every day, as we stay connected to heaven, we are being transformed and we are becoming more like Christ. And so everything that Christ was when he was on the earth, God, that is injected into us. Thank you, God. And so I thank you, God, that you can heal the sick through us, God. I thank you, God, that you can raise the dead through us. Thank you, God. I thank you, God, that we are able to speak words of faith. Hallelujah. And it happens. Thank you, God. I thank you, God, that we are able to hear the voice of the Father. And we move according to the voice of the Father. And we do not move according to anything else. But we move according to the voice of the Father. And so we just declare that we are being transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you the praise, Father God. Would you just clap your hands and just begin to release praise. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. Our soul cries out to you, hallelujah. Our soul cries out to you, hallelujah. Our soul magnifies you, oh God. I declare the works of the Lord. I declare the goodness of the Lord. I declare the works of the Lord. I declare that the angels are moving right now. The angels, ah, even as we clap our hands, the angels are rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing, hallelujah, because we are giving our praise to our Father. We are giving our praise to our Father. We are giving our praise. You are worthy to be praised. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. There is no one like you. You are mighty. You are victorious. You are true to your word. You are faithful. You are beautiful. You are majestic. You are all powerful. All the universe bows at your word. Hallelujah. And you are our father. You are are our father you are our father you are our father and we are the apple of your eye we are the beloved of your heart oh mama yama se robo sakanda thank you for loving us thank you for embracing us thank you for washing us thank you for rescuing us we give you the honor we give you the praise we give you the glory you have been faithful to your word god you have been faithful to your word and we honor you hallelujah we honor you, hallelujah. We honor you and we give you glory. 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 We give you the glory. We give you the glory. Our problems do not compare to your glory. Our need does not compare to your glory. Hallelujah. Our issues are small in comparison to your glory. And so we say thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for showing up. You always show up. You always show up. 
You always show up. You always turn things around. You always do the miraculous, oh God. I thank you, God, that even when we were not worthy, God, you still showed up. You still rescued us. You still stepped in, Father God, and you pushed back the hand of the enemy. And for that, God, we thank you. Hey, Mararabande, Rokorobo Sandara, Rededebe Shanda. We give you the honor that is due unto you. We give you, ah, if we have anything, it's because of you. If we have anything, it's because of you. If we are here today, it is because of you. If we have peace in our mind, it is because of you, Father God. We didn't go crazy because of you. You kept my mind, God. You kept my mind. And I give you the honor that is due your name, oh God. You have stayed true to your word. And I give you the honor that you deserve tonight. Everything that we have, everything that we could ever be, everything that we are right now, it is all because of you. And we give you the praise 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 and we honor you father god be magnified be glorified hallelujah be glorified and be magnified oh hallelujah father even right now we allow our memory to go back to those moments god where you showed yourself strong i allow my memory to go back right now to those moments where you showed yourself strong and i adore you I bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And once again, we declare that we will put our trust in you. We declare that we will put our trust in you, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus that there is no issue and there is no problem that is going to take our eyes off of you. You are the solution. You are the provider. You are everything that we need. And so we just declare in the mighty name of Jesus that we will keep our eyes on you, Father God. We will keep our eyes on you. We will not be bullied. We will not be bullied by the enemy. He comes with all this talk. He comes with all this talk that has no power and it has no authority as long as I stay in agreement with God. And so I declare by faith that I stand in agreement with God. Everything that God has said about our families, it is so. I stand in agreement with God. Everything that God has said about our finances, I stand in agreement with God. Everything that God has said about our future, I stand in agreement with God. Everything that God has said about Maranatha Life Church, I stand in agreement with God. God, I thank you for that new temple. I thank you for our building. I thank you for our own home. I thank you, Father God, that you bring the souls, the souls, the harvest of souls from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, I thank you, Father God, for people father god that are not church goers but i thank you father god for new converts i thank you father god for new converts father god fresh brand new babies fresh brand new people that have never been to church before that do not come from a, a religious background father god i pray that some way somehow you would connect them to someone who is a part of this family that you would allow them to come across a video that you would allow them to come across something on instagram or social media father god and that they would feel drawn to this house god you have a people you have a people that you have designated toward this house father god and we just call them forth come on begin to call them we command them to come. We command them to come. And God, I thank you, Father God, that when they come, they will be consistent. Father God, I release the angels of the Lord, Father God, to protect those, God, that are planting themselves in Maranatha Life Church. Father God, we release the angels of God in the name of Jesus to protect those, Father God, that are planting themselves in this house, God. Father God, that they would resist the temptation to flee, that they would resist the temptation, Father God, to be transplanted, that they would resist the temptation when they want to be offended with someone and not come back. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would guard their hearts, guard their minds, and we declare, Father God, that they will not be sifted they will not be sifted. Their faith, we pray that their faith would not fail. We pray that their faith would not fail. God, we even pray for those, God, that have left in past seasons. But God, you were not finished with them. And I ask God, bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back so that they can receive whatever it is that you wanted them to have, Father God. 
we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that this is a house of miracles. It is a house of miracles. It is a house of healing. It is a house of signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that cancer will be canceled in this house in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for the miracles, Father God, blind eyes being opened even during worship, Father God, that the supernatural, Father God, would become the norm at Maranatha Life Church in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Open up the old wells of miracles, oh God. Open up the wells of the miraculous. Father God, open up the wells of power. Open, God, as we seek your face, Father God, as we fast, as we pray, as we consecrate, Father God, open up the wells. Open up the ancient wells of glory. Open up the ancient wells, Father God, that flow from your throne, Father God. Open up the ancient wells of the early church, Father God, so that we can be filled with power. Your word says, and ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so we say, Holy Spirit, come upon us. 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 I decree and I declare that we are walking into a season of testimonies. We are walking into a season of testimonies, Father God. We are walking into a season of testimonies, testimonies of healing, testimonies of provision, Father God, testimonies of the miraculous. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so I thank you, God, that even as we are praying, Father God, every stronghold and spirit of heaviness, Father God, it is broken off of your people. It is destroyed and it is broken off of your people. Father God, teach us to pray through till we're light in the spirit. Teach us to pray through until we are light in the spirit, God. God, I thank you. I thank you. Because a lot of times the spirit of heaviness is deception. I feel heavy. I feel heavy. I feel heavy. And it's deception to paralyze you. It's deception so you won't worship and you won't pray. Okay? But when that spirit of heaviness wants to come on you, start thinking about the cross. Start thinking about resurrection. Start thinking about the last time God showed up miraculously for you and begin to just give God praise. Begin to just worship him and give him praise and begin to pray in the spirit and press through until you get that spirit of heaviness off of you. Take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of what? Praise. praise. So praise gets rid of heaviness. That's what we just did five minutes ago. We started to what? Praise. God, we give you glory. God, and all of a sudden, it was like, boom, 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 boom. And everybody's like, glory, 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 glory. Because we, we put on the garment of praise. Guess what? Sometimes your garment of praise is going to be put on top of that garment of heaviness. But that garment of praise will melt away the garment of heaviness. Because you begin to get in proper alignment with seeing who God is. And you begin to realize this thing that the enemy wants to present to me to make me feel heavy, it is nothing but a lie. Because that thing is not permanent. And so I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for jobs. I thank you, Father God, for those, God, Father God, that have been in a time of faith, Father God, and believing, Father God. I thank you, God, for those, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, that have been, Father God, literally believing you for every single one of their needs, Father God, week by week, day by day. And they're fighting to remain consistent. They're fighting to remain in a place of faith, Father God. We declare breakthrough for them now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. If they're supposed to step into the area of being an entrepreneur, Father God, help them, Father God, to just move by faith, Father God, in the name of Jesus. They help, help them to keep showing up, Father God. And thank you, God, that no's will not break us. When we get a no, it is not going to break us, Father God, because we understand that you are the, go oh my God, that you are the God of the yes, Father God. And when you release the yes, God, it is big. When you release the yes, it is above and beyond what we could ask, think, or even imagine. When you release the yes, God, we may get a hundred no's, Father God, but with every no, Father God, we will remain in faith because we know a, a God yes is coming. And the God yes will make every other no look like garbage because when God says yes, he's going to say yes to something that blows your mind. He's going to, woo! God, I thank you. He's going to say yes to something that you did not even imagine, that you did not even think about. I have seen it 
And I know that what I have seen is only a drop in the bucket. You've heard me testify of this before, but I'll say it again. When I was transitioning out of the last church that I was pastoring and we were trying to figure out how we were going to make ends meet and there were all of these overhead and bills that had to be handled and situations happening at that time. And we had paid all of the buildings that we had to pay and had about $400 left in the account. And the finance team said, what are we going to do? I said, well, we just have to believe God. And we went to bed and I prayed and I put it in the hands of God and I sleep well. I'm not staying up because I can't fix it. I'm not going to stay up and worry because I don't have it. So God, I thank you. And I woke up the next morning and someone had sent a tithe of $15,000. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Someone sent a tithe of $15,000. Someone sent a tithe of $15,000. One person sent a tithe of $15,000, not $1,500, $15,000. Don't talk to me about what God cannot do. Don't talk to me about what God cannot do. And so, Father God, I thank you that we come into a place of limitless thinking. Of limitless thinking, God, that we expect the impossible. That we expect, Father God, the crazy. That we expect you to show up. Okay? Because he is who? He is God. He is God. And so we just decree and we declare the release of finances and the release of for jobs and creativity in order to be able to handle things financially. In the name of Jesus, I declare by faith the, the direction of God in relationships. The direction of God in relationships. Who should you marry? Who should you not marry? Who should you date? Who should who should you not date? Who is not supposed to be dating at all? Who's supposed to be in a season of healing? Who's supposed to get somewhere and set out? Who is supposed to stop setting down and get out there and meet somebody? God, these are all different stages, Father God. But I just pray, God, for direction. Direction, Father God. You care about our relationships. You care about healthy, godly connections. You care about marriage. You care about love, Father God. And most people have this desire. So we just pray for godly direction. And I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that we will not make decisions based on our brokenness. We will not make decisions based on our brokenness. We will not make decisions based off of our trauma. We will not repeat unhealthy cycles to try to fill a space on the inside. But I declare, God, that you are making us healthy by the power of your Holy Spirit spirit that we are doing what we need to do in a healthy way and that we are guided so that when the Holy Spirit says absolutely not we say absolutely not and when the Holy Spirit says go out to lunch you don't say absolutely not the Holy Spirit said go out to lunch and you over there being super spiritual absolutely not God said go out to lunch get your butt to that lunch be led by God sometimes it's no but sometimes it's yes so be ready for the yes don't be afraid of the yes And don't be afraid of the no, but be guided, even in that, by the Holy Spirit. And so this connects perfectly with that request, that our hearts would be completely healed so we can move in the purpose of God. So put your hand on your heart. I decree and I declare that my heart is healed so that I can move in the purpose of God. I will not be hindered. I will not be held back. I will not be paralyzed by anything the enemy throws at me. I am healed. I am whole by the work of the Spirit so I can fulfill my purpose. Give God praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, financial breakthrough and peace of mind. We've prayed for that in the name of Jesus. We pray for Aunt Wanda. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for a reversal of the diagnosis of of congestive heart failure, Father God. Father God, we pray, Father God, for there to be a draining of fluid from her lungs. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, that there would be remission from breast cancer. In the name of Jesus, Father God. And so we just declare, Father God, a complete and total overhaul in Aunt Wanda from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We send the word of the Lord. We send the word of the Lord. We send the word of healing. And Father, I pray, God, that she would get in a posture of faith, that she would get in an aggressive place of beginning to declare the word of the Lord 
for her healing, Father God, because her faith will make her whole. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing. In the name of Jesus, every lump, every growth, everything, Father God, that may be in someone's body, Father God, in the name of Jesus, if it's you, just put your hand on it right now. Command it to shrink. Command it to go away. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing. We declare any type of mass, any type of growth, any type of thing, Father God, that tries to attach itself. We command it in the name of Jesus. We command it in the name of Jesus, Father God, to be eradicated and to be shrunk in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There was a, a man who was in the hospital with cancer. And this was during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, the Lord pushed our spiritual father, Papa Nahum Rosario, He's also my natural father, for those of you that don't know. And the Lord pushed him to go live every night. So every night, I believe, except for Saturdays, he was going live during the pandemic. And he was bringing a word Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every single day, he was bringing a word every night. And somehow, somebody shared those preachings or those ministries with this person who was uh, in the hospital with cancer. And so he would pray for healing all the time. And so the man was in the hospital and he, some, the Holy, and he was Jewish. He's not even a Christian, a Jewish man. He received the word of the Lord. They took him to go see a specialist. And the specialist said, we have never seen this before. All of your healthy cells surrounded the cancerous cells and encapsulated the cancer cells and literally attacked the cancer cells until the cancer was gone. They had never seen anything like that before. Don't tell me that God is not a miracle worker. We just have to release the word of healing and we have to teach people the word of God so that we learn to believe in healing. It is your faith that is gonna make you whole. Decide in your mind right now, I am not going to die sick. Okay, I'm gonna be 90, 100 years old, I'm gonna be cute, I'm still gonna be moving around. And when my days are done, I'm just going to gather my family. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to pray for them. And I'll tell them, I'm going to see you on the other side. I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to go be with the Lord. I don't have to die sick. Long life has been promised to the children of God. So we can claim that if I'm living in holiness, if I'm seeking the Lord, if I'm forgiving my enemies, if I'm walking in love and I'm doing the work of the Lord, I can claim that promise of long life. And so, Father, I thank you that healing flows through all of our bodies. God, we don't allow hatred. We don't allow uh, offense. We don't allow bitterness in our heart. We release our enemies to their own harvest. Hear what I said. We release our enemies to their own harvest and we give them to God and we declare that the life of Christ flows through us. Healing flows through us. Resurrection power flows through us, Father God. So we will be vibrant at 70 and we will be vibrant at 80 and we will be vibrant at 90, Father. And we will be vibrant at 95. And if we want to go to 100, we'll be vibrant at 100. If we want to go to 105, we'll be vibrant at 105. But we speak life resurrection life if God was able to go into the tomb of Lazarus who had been dead four days and stinking and decomposing don't tell me that God cannot just breathe healing on us so that we have a long life to make sure that our children serve the Lord and our grandchildren serve the Lord and our great-grandchildren serve the Lord that we would be the mouthpiece of God God does not need anointed people leaving the earth God needs anointed people here to do his work in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so all of these family members, we just give them to God. Protection, strength, the return of children to their home. Father God, we have Kellis and Sarai and Amir and Ronnie and Latoris and Joshua, Kiera and Kylan and Cameron and Jacoby and Kalia. I just declare, Father God, this entire family, Father God, comes into the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I decree and I declare, Father God, the salvation, Father God, and the alignment of this family with your perfect will. God, every person, Father God, named on this paper, God, that they would have an encounter with you, that they would have an encounter with God, that they would have an encounter 
encounter that they cannot deny and that it would bring them into the fullness of relationship with you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, heal them, Father God. Save them, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Transform their lives, Father God. Bless them and line them up. And we decree and we declare that everything that the enemy thought he was going to do to destroy this family, now it is destroyed and now it is broken, Father God, because we have called out their names in prayer. Declaring, God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in this family. In the name of Jesus. More healing, Father God, for Geraldine. Father, we speak to her kidneys and we command them, Father God, to be healed. God, that they would function well, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. And we ask, God, that you would heal a Natalie Alexis from that liver condition, Father. Touch her body and give her a new liver. God, we don't even have to, Father God, ask for healing. But God, you have livers, Father God, in storehouses, in glory. And we ask, God, for organs, Father God, for new organs, God. Let the supernatural, Father God, be so present in these last days, Father God, that you would give new organs, God, that you would give new hearts. Hearts, God, that you would give new lungs, that you would give out new kidneys, Father God, that you would give out new body parts, new eyes, Father God, new ears, new eardrums, Father God. We just decree and we declare, Father God, that your power be made manifest on the earth, God, and that there would be no limit in our heart to your power. God, that when somebody says something that we would not say, oh, that's impossible, that we would be able to say our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven, hallelujah, and he has the power, God, to do miraculous things in the name of Jesus. And I just declare, Father God, healing spirit, soul, mind, and body and mind in Jesus' name. And I decree and I declare, Father God, the release of an entrepreneurial anointing. I release an entrepreneurial anointing on this house. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, God, that those that are seeking your face, Father God, I decree and I declare, Father God, creative ideas, Father God, that is going to cause them, Father God, to create the wealth that they need for their families and also to be able to sow into the kingdom of God first and foremost. And so I thank you, God, that we are anointed to make wealth, God. We are anointed to manage wealth, oh God. We are anointed to build your kingdom with wealth, oh God. Father God, I release, Father God, a kingly anointing, Father God. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation, Father God. And a king is not usually broke. And so we declare, Father God, that the kingly anointing, the anointing of King David, the anointing of King Solomon, the anointing of King Jesus is upon us, Father God. Father God, to be able to, with kingdom principles, Father God, do business on the earth, God, that will yield fruit and results in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now. We thank you for it now. God, you are our source. Everything comes from you. And God, I thank you that with every blessing, with every blessing, we will not, we will not be damaged. With every blessing, we will not pull away from you, but we will draw closer to you. Father God, I thank you that the blessings and the riches and the things that you will trust us with, God, that we will fully understand that we don't own these things, that we are just managers. We're just managers. Father God, you trust us enough to be managers. God, deal with our character in such a way that you can trust us to manage things for your kingdom. And so we declare that it is so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If prayer blessed you tonight, I want you to shout. It blessed me. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Do not be discouraged. Don't stop praying. Don't stop declaring. Don't stop decreeing. And whenever that doubt wants to come in about your situation, Get the word of God. Get the word of God. Because what he said is not a lie. I am the head. I may look a little tailish in some seasons, but I am not the tail. That's not my identity. I may be behind sometimes, but that's not my identity. Which means I may be there for a minute, but I'm not staying there. 
because it's not my identity. It's not my identity. I don't, I, I'm trying to remember who it was that told me this. They took a certain number of homeless people and made them millionaires, and they took a certain number of millionaires and made them homeless. And in a matter of time, all the homeless people that, were, that became millionaires overnight went back to being homeless. And out of the millionaires, I think it was like 80% of them went back to being a millionaire because they knew their identity, because of their mindset, because of the way that they think. And so that's what God is doing with us. God is rewiring our mindset. God is helping us to understand who we are. God is helping us to understand we don't have to take no junk from the devil. That we have authority, that we have prayer, that we have declarations, that we have the word of God, that we have the anointing and the power of God. I, I was reading, like I told you guys, David, and it said he was out there taking care of sheep. They called him out from taking care of the sheep and they anointed him to be the next king. Nobody was expecting him to be the one, but they anointed him to be the next king. And it said, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David. And then after that, after the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he confronted Goliath when no one else in the army dared to confront Goliath. Why? Because he had been anointed for that season. If there was no Goliath, there would have been no King David. Okay? So the anointing of God is upon you to slay some things. Those issues and those problems are going to elevate you. They're going to elevate you. So we have to learn how to confront things. We have to learn how to fight through things. We have to learn how to just be consistent and persistent. Keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep working this business. I'm going to keep looking for this idea. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep tithing. I'm going to keep giving. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep asking. And I will testify of the goodness of God. I will testify. Amen. And so I praise God. I bless you. If somebody has brought their tithe and their offering to the Lord tonight, please go to the website because my brain is not, it's in prayer right now. It ain't in that area. But if you feel compelled to sow, you can go to the website Maranatha Life Church and sow your seed. I think our cash app is M Life CH. All the other ones I do not remember right now. And so you can get that on the website. All right? Because we are a giving house. We believe in giving. God is our source and we get to participate in giving. Amen? In Jesus' name. Is this for the church? Amen. So, Father, we just bless her seed. We bless her seed. We bless her obedience. And we declare, Father God, that faith has been activated in her. And we just declare, Father God, that whatever it is that she needs, Father God, that as her soul prospers, her life is going to prosper. As her soul prospers, her life is going to prosper. And we just declare that it is so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is such a powerful example. When God speaks to you, move. When he speaks to you, move. Some people will take this and they're like, oh, I think everybody needs to get a $100 bill. No, it, it, that's manipulation. And I'm not judging their relationship with God. But we have to learn how to move when God says move. When I hear God say move, I move. Okay? When God says move, we move. Because you don't want to miss a window. You don't want to miss a window. Sometimes God will open a window and he'll say, move. And then you move and you make the deal. You move, you have the conversation and something comes out of it. You move and you say, hey, uh, is this job available? We haven't even posted it yet, but you know what? Go ahead and put in your resume. When, when he says, move, do not delay because there's something that he has for you. Amen. So we come in agreement in whatever it is that the Lord has released because of your obedience in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Let's stand up to our feet. As we get ready to go, thank you for committing to prayer. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for taking this time. I know that sometimes we're fighting through traffic and we're doing many different things, but thank you for pressing through and getting here because we're going to build this church through prayer. You're going to build your life through prayer, but we're also going to build this church through prayer. If we don't build it in prayer, then whatever we build, the storm will come and knock it over. If we don't build it on prayer, if we don't build it on the word, if we don't build it on Jesus and in the Holy Spirit, whatever we build will crumble when the real storm hits. We want to make sure that we are building a solid foundation for our lives and for this body of believers. Amen. And so, Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you for the oil that you just poured out on us, God. 
we le we're leaving light. God, we're leaving light. We're leaving, Father God, with a pep in our step, Father God. We're leaving, Father God, with understanding and with just hope and joy, knowing, God, that you are a God, Father God, that does, Father God, amazing and wonderful things. And so we thank you, Father God, and we ask, God, that as we go from this place, we bind every spirit of accident. We bind every spirit of sickness. We bind every spirit of distraction. We bind any pushback from the enemy that he may try to hit us with some news or something to discourage us. And we decree and we declare that we will leave here, Father, with a made up mind, with a made up mind to continue to persist and be consistent in this relationship and on this journey. And so we declare the blessing of the Lord is upon us and it cannot be reversed. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. I love you. Be blessed. And you are dismissed. Online family, I love you. Bye.